test for the second Excel test in Intro to Computers. And uh, first page here has some things about dates. And uh, we're supposed to start off by putting a formula in B2 that will always display the current day regardless of when the spreadsheet is open. And that's the today function, just equals today. And functions always have parentheses, whether there's an argument inside the parentheses or not. Okay. Birthdays in column C are date serial numbers, but they haven't been formatted as dates. So what we have to do is select them and format them as 14 March 2012. So first select them and right click. And uh, the, the option we want is not up here. We've only got two options here. And uh, we want the word. So we need to go to more number formats, which we can do here. Or we can right click and go to format cell. And they both get us to the same place. And what I want is my date options. And I want um, 14 March 2012, uh, and I want a four-digit year. This is a two-digit year, so I'm going to have to scroll. So I'm looking for this one. Click on OK. Put a formula in column D that will compute the age that the person will be after his or her birthday this year. So uh, basically, I'm just subtracting uh, the current year minus the birth year um, and I can't use that should be 2015 instead of 2014 uh, but you can't use a number for the year I have to use a formula so um, I'm gonna do two things to make life a little bit easier uh, I'm gonna put another column in here uh, that is the birthday month I'm sorry birthday year and current year and the birthday year is just going to be use the year function to extract the year from a serial number. And so I tell it, tell me what year is represented by that date right there. And it should be 1992. And it is. And then the current year is going to be the uh, year of this cell right here. And that's going to be an absolute cell reference. So we need the dollar signs. And so that's going to be 2015 all the way down. Um, probably don't actually need to go to all that trouble, but it does make it a little bit easier to do the rest. So how old is the person going to be this year? Well, I'm going to subtract this number minus this number. So it's going to be equals, and then the current year minus, and after this guy has his birthday this year, he will be 23. Okay, then I need a formula. Let's copy that down before we go on. So. Uh, copy that all the way down and it'll tell us how old everybody's going to be this year. And then let's go to birthday this month. Okay, um, It'll display true if the person has a birthday this month, false otherwise. Okay, uh, This is March, so I should get a true here. Uh, I've got any more March birthdays down here. Uh, one other one. So it looks like there's two places that I see where there's going to be a March birthday. So I need to know the month of this, and I also need to know the month of today. So uh, let's add two more columns here. You know, you don't have to do these extra columns. You can just write formulas that are a little bit more comp uh, complicated, but I think this makes it a little bit easier. So the birthday month is going to be the month of this guy's birthday. And November is month 11, so that's good. And this is going to be the month of today, which is this cell right here. And again, that needs to be absolute, so put the dollar signs in, close parenthesis, and there we go. Okay, then now let's copy this all the way down. So what I want to know is, is the birthday month equal to the current month? So now that I've gone and done this work over here, this formula becomes really simple. I just want to know if the birthday month is equal to the current month. And that's all. And I'm going to get false most of the time, but I know I'm going to get true at least two rows and maybe more if I miss something. So there's a true value, and there's one. I did miss one. There's one, and there's one. So three of them. And that takes care of our date functions. Now let's take a look at uh, financial functions. 
and um, if I invest twenty-five thousand dollars, so my investment amount is going to be twenty-five thousand, and I leave it in the bank without adding anything to it at eight percent. A regular payment is going to be zero if I don't add anything to it. Uh, the annual rate is going to be eight percent, and it's going to be uh, ten years, and it's quarterly, so it's going to be four periods per year. And then my rate per period is going to be a formula that says take this number, the annual rate, and divide it by the number of periods down here. Okay, And the total number of periods is going to be the number of years times the number of periods per year. And are we doing this at the beginning or the end? Um, and since we're not ad adding anything to it, it doesn't really matter here whether you're doing the beginning or the end. So I'll just put a zero down here. And what's my ending value going to be? My ending value, I want to find future value as the ending value. So let's go up here and tell it we want to do, um, actually let's go to our formulas tab the way we've been doing in class. And go to financial, then choose future value. And the rate remembers the rate per period, so I've got to use this number, not the annual rate. Uh, the number of periods is right here. It's not the number of years. Payment is always a negative number, so let's put minus, and the payment is zero, so it's really not going to affect things now, but it would if we changed the numbers. Uh, the present value is uh, also a negative, and that's the sum of all the deposits I've made so far, and the type is going to be this number here, and click on OK. And so if I invest 25000 at 8% annual interest, compounded quarterly for 10 years, I will end up with $55,200.99. OK. Uh, it looks like we're trying to figure payment on this one. If we borrow 30000 the loan amount then is 30000 And we're going to pay it all back, so the ending balance will be zero. The annual rate is 10%. Uh, the number of years is 10 years. Uh, we're doing monthly, so periods per year is 12. The rate per period now is going to be equal to, it's going to be formula, the annual rate divided by the number of periods per year. And the total number of periods is going to be the number of years times the number of periods per year. And uh, we are doing these at the end of every month. So we need to put a 1 here. And then we need to figure out what the monthly payment is. It's going to be the payment function. So let's go to financial here, scroll down to the P's, and there's PMT. So the rate is the rate per period, which is this number. Uh, the number of periods, not the number of years. So I need this number for the time. Uh, the present value of a loan is a positive number, so I just click on that. Future value of the loan is going to be zero, and the type of payment that we're making is at the beginning of the period. Click on OK, and it'll tell me that my monthly payment is going to be $393.18. And that's in red because payments are always negative. Okay, let's go on to the last financial problem here. We currently have $50,000 in the bank, so that's our current investment value. Our investment goal is $200,000, and we're going to save $200 every month, and we're going to do that for 10 years. And the number of periods per year, we said monthly, so it's going to be 12 periods per year. And we're doing it at the end of every month, so we need a zero here. Okay, let's figure out the number of periods. The number of periods is going to be uh, the number of years times the number of periods per year and enter. So 12 a year for 10 years is 120 and the monthly rate um, this is what we're trying to figure out. Okay. Um, so that's going to be the rate function And uh, how many periods? Uh, here's my number of periods right here. What is the payment? Payment's always negative, so remember to put a minus sign in front of it, and it's going to be 200. Uh, present value in the savings problem is just like payments that I've already made, so payments are always negative, so the sum of a bunch of payments I've already made would be negative as well. Uh, the future value is going to be the goal, and the type is going to be the 0 or the 1. Uh, which is right here, and click on OK. And that is going to be my monthly rate, but rates are almost always quoted as annual rates, so we need to 
take that number and we have to multiply it by the number of periods per year. And it's going to, uh, we're going to have to earn 11% in order to reach that goal with $200 a month in savings. Okay, we have some database functions here. Um, I need an advanced filter to determine which stocks in the S category or the H category. So the category is going to be S or it's going to be H. So I'm going to need two rows for my rules. And I want a total current value, which is this column right here, of $10,000 or more. So that's greater than or equal to $10,000. I got to do it twice. Once for S and once for H. So determine which stocks have a total current value of 10,000 or more. So let's go here and let's do a data advanced filter and wrong filter, advanced filter. And so there's my list range. My criteria range is going to be uh, this area right here. I don't need to include name because there's nothing in that column and click on OK here and then click on OK and uh, if you take a look at the current value of every one of those it is uh, greater than or equal to 10,000. Okay, so I want to know how many stocks there are that meet that criteria. Well, um, actually to make my life a little bit easier I'm going to clear this filter. Um, I know I've got the rule right over here so I can clear the filter and I'm going to give this a name I don't know if I gave it a name when I created the spreadsheet or not. Apparently I did not. So we're going to call this uh, stocks. And now um, the number of stocks is going to be just a count. Decount, sorry. And then you know the database. The database, I just named it stocks. That's easier than typing in cell references. Uh, the field that I want to count. Uh, remember when you count and decount, it only counts numbers in cells. So uh, do not choose column A or column B. Uh, Any one after that would work. I'll just choose the third column, column C. And the criteria is going to be uh, this stuff up here. So there are 12 shares that meet that. There are 12 stocks that meet that. Then the number of shares would be a sum of these numbers here. So that's going to be a D sum. And I'm going to call my table stocks. The field I want to sum is the um, number of shares, which is column three in the table. And my criteria. It's going to be the same criteria as before. It's going to be these cells right here. And close it off, and we're good. So there are 12,950 shares among those stocks. Then I want to know what is the highest current total value. So it's going to be a D max. And it's going to be stocks. And then it's going to be. Um, my field, uh, which one do I want to find the maximum of current, total current value, which is one, two, three, four, five, column seven. And my criteria range is going to be this range over here. And I'm close parenthesis and hit enter. And that's the highest value. Now, um, just to you know verify this and convince myself I really did it right, uh, we're going to do an advanced filter. And my criteria range is the stuff which is still selected from last time. And if I click on OK. Now if I look at these, I can certainly count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I can also count the number of shares here. If I drag my mouse over these down here, it should tell me uh, what the sum of that is. There's 12,950 and that's the answer I get here. Uh, and the highest value in the total current value column, we'll just have to kind of eyeball this one. It's the $66,188. Let's try out the lookup function. I have a lookup table over here. Uh, when you have text in the first column of lookup table, it almost always means that what you're going to be doing is uh, an exact lookup. So I want a formula to look up the cost. So I want a V lookup function. Let's go to uh, formulas and uh, 
that is under lookup and reference. And then if you look up, okay, what value am I looking up? I'm looking up that value right there. Where's my table array? My table array is the stuff right here. What column do I want to get the cost? Well, that's the third column of the table, so put a three. And if you're doing a text lookup, you should almost always put the word false here and click on OK. So the cost of a stroller is 145.67. Now I want to look up the markup rate. Okay, so uh, it's going to be another B lookup. The value I'm looking up again is stroller. The table array is the same place as it was before. And the column index number um, is the markup one, two, three, four. That's column number four. And uh, again, same data, so I need false down here for my last argument. Click on OK. And it should tell me that the markup for a stroller is 0.3, which is another way of writing 30%. There we go. And if I change this, let's change it to uh, aspirator. Okay, enter. And it looks up to $2.56. It looks up to 45%. Okay, last page, coffee summary. Put formulas in B3, that's from here down to D6, which is down here, by adding the corresponding cells on the 2010 and 2011 coffee worksheets. So uh, let's start off with an equal sign. Tell we're going to uh, formula. Let's go to um, 2010 coffee, and we'll pick this one. And then I want to add on the 2011 copy in the same cell and hit enter. And if I go look at my numbers here, I had 45,000 and 50,000. Add those together, you get 95,000. Now, uh, they're referencing another worksheet. They are relative cell references. So if I copy down, it'll catch the south, east, and west numbers. And if I go across, it'll give me my different uh, numbers for the different types of copies. So, uh, that's it for the practice test. Uh, the actual test will be quite similar to this.